Hello, I'm Allison Sudal, and I'm here at the IUCN World Conservation Congress in gorgeous Hawaii, and I have the immense honor of speaking to Professor E.O. Wilson. He is a conservationist, scientist, and the father of biodiversity, um, and it's, it's extraordinary and very charming and a wonderful storyteller. And um, I just thought we could start by a very simple question, which is, what is biodiversity? Because I think a lot of people don't actually know. Uh, well, I'll tell you. Uh, but first, uh, let me abjure the uh, term father of biodiversity, because I have some formidable competition for that title. <laughs> 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 and I might get struck by lightning <laughs> yet. Uh, biodiversity just means all of the variation in life, but we had a term which is heritable. That is, all of the inherited variation in life. And the best way to define it further to make sense to everybody is to recognize uh, that it comes in three levels. First, we have the ecosystem, that's now a familiar word to most, mm -hmm. ecosystems would be lakes, meadows, forests, coral reefs, so on. And the next level down is the ensemble of species that make up the ecosystem. And the next level and the base level is the genes, and the genes um, prescribe the traits that define the species okay. that make up the ecosystem. We only know about one-fifth of the species at this point. Four-fifths of the species in nature have not yet been discovered by science or, or at least defined by science right, so that we can look after red. them and know what we're doing. So we're losing a large part of a heritage four and, I don't know, three and a half billion years old without even knowing what it is we're losing. I'm in this this movie that's going to be coming out in a couple of months. Uh, it's part of the Harry Potter world. I don't know if you're familiar with the Harry Potter world. No, never heard. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, I have this really <laughs> wonderful idea of you okay. just just being, you know, out with, with with all of the little things in nature and not knowing about what anything else. Of so that's just a I romantic look. idea. Okay, I, I'll look for it. <laughs> I hope you don't play a witch. I do play a witch, oh, but a good okay. witch, what? a good oh, witch. Oh, a I'm wonderful. sorry, I forgot there are good witches. Yeah, 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 oh, that's okay. all about good witches and wizards. All right, well, then um, but but it's the movie is actually called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And it's about a magizoologist um, named Newt Scamander. And he he's basically like the, uh, like a sort of biodiversity specialist in magical creatures. Cool. And so there are all kinds of different magical creatures and he loves them big and small and weird and, and like slimy and great and beautiful and scary. Um, anyway, you, you mentioned something earlier about how this is uh, sort of a, a fantasy moment that we're in. It's a, it's a witches and wizards tale, it's hobgoblins and <laughs> dark and light, and, and I just, I don't know, I wanted to know a little bit more about the way that you see this story that we're in as a fantasy story. Well, I knew that you were um, a, a, perform, a performer in um, a realm of fiction, so uh, I use that as a metaphor. Yes, right. but it's a metaphor that, that helps us. Yes, well, you know, the, uh, the thousands of experts that are here in Honolulu as we speak mm -hmm. are the good guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they are here, one could say, fighting extinction, fighting degradation of the living world and trying to get us back on track into a lovely world that we inherited. And it's sort of like that, that uh, the battle between the bad uh, the bad uh, angels and the uh, good angels and the demons and the uh, the best part of of uh, human experience. Uh, but let me say this: uh, the real world, you know, the real beasts uh, are amazing, and with greater entertainment. This is not to, you know, to. Uh, criticize no, what I, <laughs> your, your producer and director are, uh, are making, but um, 
this, I think, highlights something we badly need, uh, which is the more of the real world in its real drama. I know we've had quite enough of baiting great white sharks and uh, studying uh, swarms of butterflies migrating south. It's good, but if you, if filmmakers uh, and creators of fiction, you know, that is to people who write fiction, uh, not just nonfiction, uh, poets, pay even more close attention to the real world as we know it and all of the strange lifestyles and adaptations and interactions and histories and million year dramas that go on constantly in the real world. Um, and somehow get the public tuned into that, there'd be an endless well of creativity for, for the people who compose it, for those who perform it. Mm -hmm. It is, the living world is a magic well. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Uh, monsters play such a tremendous role. Hollywood, classical drama, monsters we have always loved. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we can be pretty sure that uh, that fear of the unknown, what's out there in the dark, evolved when our remote ancestors were hunter-gatherers and at night they gathered around campfires and that's not imagination, we have the evidence now that that's really how humanity started by firelight around mm. the fires in which all of the activities of the, uh, the band uh, were spoken about and stories were told, the feats of hunting and uh, discussions of individuals, gossip and so on, proceeded. The daylight was something entirely like, uh, that was more animal-like, it was more searching for food and water and so on. Yeah. But one of the key themes of life, as it's preserved in hunter-gatherer societies today, that still exists, like the Kung Bushmen of Africa, mm -hmm. um, is, uh, what's out there in the dark and we know that in the primeval environment uh, those campfires are being circled at night by something sometimes they would know it might be a lion or pride of lions sometimes we might it might be hyenas and something sometimes it might be well what we don't know it's out there in the dark stay here in the firelight right. and you will live and let's consider that going on for literally tens even hundreds of thousands of years going all the way back to we know by evidence to a species ancestral to our own directly ancestral homo erectus gave rise to homo sapiens and that must have had a huge impact that defensive part of human behavior that fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And so it is that we create myths and the parts in the movie you're going to be in, I'm sure, uh, that represent little understood monsters and demons and the, the um, potence and the, uh, the chance that you have to dispel them and the good angels to protect you uh, are the human defenses of the mind that evolved over literally hundreds of thousands of years. How wonderful to feel so connected. Yes. Well, that's what I want the creative arts to be doing more of, incidentally. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay.